Hey boys and girls, I'm gonna start part two of our colored pencil composition. Uh, we've got the composition drawn, um, kind of a composition inspired by Sonia and Robert Delaunay and Monty Montgomery. And I'm going to kind of take it to that direction where it's uh, looking a little more like orphism or that bright colored kind of some um, simple shapes, but we're gonna do some bold color. One of the goals for this is to see how you do with creating some areas of light, medium, and dark with your pressure with your colored pencil. So doing the shading thing, kind of gradation we call it too. So um, it's gonna be an interesting challenge to see how you plan this in to your composition. Um, this is one I did um, last semester, last quarter, and uh, just to give you an idea of where we're going with this. So I'm gonna get started on my new one, my new composition. Anytime I'm gonna start and really dig in on something, whether, or especially when I'm at home being an artist, whether I'm painting, coloring, anything, I wanna get my materials ready. So I've got my composition here and I've got my colored pencils sharpened. It really drives me crazy to sit down to do something and realize half my colored pencils are not even ready. So take a minute, whether you're using a handheld, which is what I recommend for colored pencils so that your machine doesn't eat it up get them sharpened. I always like to put them on a towel because they don't roll around a lot. I like to organize them in rainbow order. And that's not just because I love rainbows, but it's because when you have them organized like this, you know your color options. If I need an orange, I can see what oranges I have. If I need a blue, I can see what blues I need or I have. So that just keeps you more organized. Um, I also like to keep, especially with colored pencils, a scrap piece of paper around because sometimes these colors translate differently in your paper. And if you're not 100% sure what the color is gonna look like, you may want to practice it first, kind of give a little scribble and see how it goes. So I'm gonna start here. I think I always, for some reason, like to start with orange. I don't know why. Orange is one of my, red orange is a lot of times one of my favorites. That looks like a good kind of red orange color, sure. And I think I'm gonna start here on this. And I'm gonna start um, with some pressure. I'm gonna start with a little bit of a heavier pressure and then I'm gonna work into my lighter. Now, one thing I want to remind you, um, as you're maturing as an artist, no matter your age, um, when you are kind of exiting elementary school, you're moving into the intermediate years or the um, junior high years, everybody knows that you know how to color. You've probably colored and mastered coloring something in hundreds of times. Now it's about how you're coloring, how you're approaching any kind of opportunity to color. You want to be trying to grow yourself as an artist and attempting to be as neat, as careful as you can and trying something you've never done before. So if you have not shaded like this before, um, try this. This, is, this can be really fun and really gratifying when you get something like this finished. And it's nothing more than lightening up on your pressure here. I'm trying to um, go soft. Sometimes coloring in little circles helps when you're doing that little bit of light coloring and it feels weird that you have light pressure on something. You might color a little heavier down here now. But that's the challenge. The challenge is to constantly be growing yourself as an artist. And sometimes it does require slowing down and kind of playing around with the colors that you have. So let's see, I might start here with some yellow. And actually you can blend not just one color, but you may wanna blend, or like one color light to dark. You may wanna practice blending some colors together. So right here, I'm doing this bright yellow, dark, medium, light. And I'm not sure how this one's gonna show up because yellow is kind of tricky sometimes when you're, um, uh, on camera or even on like the document camera. But I'm gonna kind of blend in here too, this kind of like yellowy green color. Maybe I picked the wrong color to try to blend, but this could be um, kind of a neat look because sometimes yellow needs a little, a little extra help when you're going light because it's already kind of a lighter color, even though it's a color, okay. And then maybe I'll go for some green up here. I do tend to kind of color in a rainbow. This is a little bit of a different kind of green too. And I might do the corners. Like you can decide, it doesn't have to be one side only is dark to light. You can kind of have a variety of ways that you're approaching this. 
One other thing I find too, when I've drawn something with pencil, I'm already doing it. And it usually takes me a minute to realize, oh yeah, my hand's gonna get covered in pencil and so is my paper. You may wanna use your scrap paper for just leaning your hand on so that you are not um, rubbing your lead pencil drawing all over it's, and making your paper a little on the dirty side. I always forget that. But as you can see, this um, is, there's lots of ways to color this. Um, I'm going to kind of work on some light mediums and darks throughout this whole thing and kind of trying to find some interesting ways to approach it. Uh, now, a lot of times squares, people think squares just need to be like a flat color where you just color it evenly, but not at all. So I might plan to do like, I'm just gonna kind of outline this one. Sometimes you have to make a plan or it's really easy to kind of forget. I'm gonna do a little, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of it yet, but I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do the edges darker and the middle lighter. So kind of get this mapped in here. And if you notice, um, I'm using really small movements because I'm trying not to get too far in. I'm trying to go a little bit in a circle. Now I'm gonna go a little bit in super light in the center. You can always go darker later, but you really can't go lighter. It's really hard to erase. It looks erased and you don't really want to erase. So you're just kind of doing it with the pencil. And don't worry if you accidentally go in another space. Those kind of things don't get noticed by anyone but the artist, truthfully. Just about every work of art I've ever made, painting, doesn't even matter. I have areas that I'm like, oh gosh, I hope nobody notices that little hiccup. But that's every artist in probably almost all their works of art. So just kind of take it easy on yourself. And definitely, um, like as you get started, it doesn't look like much, but as you get rolling, it really starts to turn into something. I know the one I just showed you, when I started that, I thought, oh, I'm not making good color choices. And then at the end, I was really happy with it. So I'm just gonna keep working on this, light, medium, and dark. Um, that's something that will take some time. Um, and definitely, uh, if your hand's not used to coloring like this and gripping like this, I can already tell that my hand's getting a little tired because I don't do this all the time. This is where you wanna give your hand a little bit of a stretch break. So sometimes a little extra stretch in between can help give you a little more stamina. Um, but when you have an, a work of art like this and you have drawn all these shapes, you don't have to restrict yourself that this section's a color, this section's a color, this section's a color. Definitely like this large section here, this is an opportunity for me to blend several colors. So that's something to be thinking about too and trying to get as many colors in there as I can. I'm gonna keep going here, but I'm gonna show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna color a few different colors there. Let's see, this one I'm hoping is like a pink color. Yep, that looks like a reddish kind of pink color. I'm gonna go in this section here, I'm gonna go with the, the red, or the um, magenta red to um, an orange color. And this one I might kind of color fairly even because I, with even pressure, because I am changing colors. I'm not worried so much about light, medium, dark in this one. So, but what I am gonna do is color a little lighter because that's where I'm gonna start to blend. But I basically, the overall color I want to have looking kind of even by the time I'm done. Got that nice little bit here. I'm going really far, really light though, down here at the end. And now I'm gonna keep this pencil out. I'm gonna to switch to, let's see, I think I'll take this orange. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna start a little hard at this end here. Getting this kind of in in a dark way little bit of pressure. And then I'm gonna definitely start lightening my pressure, not quickly, I'm gonna kinda of go in that medium area. And I can already tell that some of those colors are looking a little blendy.
And I'm probably gonna need to go back and forth with my colors a little bit. So now I'm gonna take my magenta color again, go on top, I might even color this a little heavier now that I've kind of colored down there a little bit, really outline and get those whites covered up. But I'm not worried about getting every little tiny bit of white. This will do a nice job of kind of getting these blended up. I can already see it. Hopefully this is translating well in a, in a video that you can see the colors getting blended a little bit. That looks good. So there's lots of opportunities on this for different kinds of coloring. And like a large thing like this, for sure, I could do like three or four different colors. Um, little areas, you know, like I would say little areas, definitely you want to just stick with one color. But if you have something large, I could make this one where it's kind of like how you get that reflection on the CD, where it kind of looks like there are, you know, lines going this direction that just kind of all blend together. So I might do that. That might be a good idea for me. All right. Can't wait to see how you um, work on finishing yours. Take your time, do neat, careful coloring, and challenge yourself to do something that you haven't done before. Can't wait to see them.